All right, uh, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Alan, uh, and here's my colleague, Christoph. We're from an organization called VKW, and uh, we migrated this year to uh, CVCRM. So we went live in June, and uh, I would like to explain how we did our migration. We, uh... sorry? Oh, like this? Okay. Um, we involved our users from the start of the migration, and uh, every month we delivered a new version of the migration, so it was uh, iterative and incremental, our migration, and I'd like to explain uh, how we did that. But before we start, we have a question. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, the question is, uh, who is worried about this migration um, at your own organization? Do you have any worries about migration? <laughs> who is worried can... No. No worries? No, okay. <laughs> so don't hesitate to ask uh, questions during the presentation. Okay, what for an organization we are working for? It's um, a membership organization for employers, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, and managers. And we promote doing uh, business in an ethical way and we uh, promote also doing business values driven. So making profit is important because that allows you to pay your uh, personnel, but uh, you have a social function as an employer and uh, um, that's, what, that's what we are promoting uh, by organizing events for them and we also uh, distribute a magazine. We are based in the northern part of uh, Belgium. We have a headquarter and five branches. And it was a challenge during the migration to get these people from the uh, branches together every month to discuss uh, the migration. So that was an important aspect of uh, the project. What was the situation before CVCRM? We had a custom developed uh, CRM system. It was developed, I think, 10 years ago in uh, C Sharp and uh, SQL Server database. It was working quite well, uh, but it had uh, limitations. It was uh, almost impossible to maintain because it was developed by a guy uh, that was uh, gone <laughs> in the meantime. And so uh, we had quite a lot of tools around that system to do the thing that was not in the system. So it was, uh, we had tools written in Visual Basic 6, uh, Excel spreadsheets, access databases to do uh, reporting, uh, syncing with the accounting system, uh, print event batches, that kind of things were not included in the system. And we had to do it with uh, Microsoft Office tools. On the other uh, hand, we, had, uh, we have, still have a Drupal 7-based uh, website. Um, users can uh, register for events via the website, and there was a syn synchronization service to get information from uh, the Drupal CMS into our CRM uh, database. What's the current situation after the migration? Uh, we still have our Drupal 7 website, but now integrated is our CVCRM uh, installation. And we now synchronize directly with our accounting system. So it's a much uh, simpler architecture. And um, now I'm going to explain how we migrated from the proprietary system to CVCRM. I will not uh, do it in a, a chronological way. I, I just split it up in three maybe logical uh, point of views. First of all, from an organizational perspective, how did we uh, organize this project? Which teams did we have? And then there will be a more technical part is um, how did we program that migration? 
and I will uh, finish with a human perspective. How did we involve our users for this migration? Okay. So we had um, three teams, and I will be uh, very impolite and start <laughs> with our team, Christophe. <laughs> <laughs> So we had a, a development team uh, consisting of uh, two uh, very bright, clever guys. <laughs> um, but no, I'm joking. The most important uh, team, I think, in this project were our users that we involved from the start. And then um, we had a team that thinks they are the most important one. It's a steering committee with our CEO and our marketing and communication manager, but we were also part of that team. Um, and then um, there was also a, a separate team, both of us together with our marketing and communication manager that did a terrific job. He's not a technical guy, but he's a down to earth, getting things done uh, kind of uh, guy. and. Uh, he uh, did a lot of uh, things for us that we don't like to do, uh, send meeting requests, uh, asking the right questions during the meetings, um, talking to our CEO about stuff, um, asking to delay the project. So that was his uh, very valuable and job. Sometimes, I believe. Yes. <laughs> so, um, it was really a teamwork to uh, realize this project. We started this uh, project before thinking about CVCRM. Uh, we started with a meeting with uh, all our users and uh, we asked them to dream about the new CVCRM system. Uh, in the company, a lot of people were complaining about the system we were using and they wanted something else. So we organized a meeting with um, our users from all over the country. And um, we asked them to uh, dream about a new system and to write it down as a user story. A user story is a uh, uh, something from agile development. It's a very simple way of capturing requirements by writing down a sentence with a fixed structure as a I want to, so that. So for instance, as a marketing manager, I want to be able to send every week a newsletter to our members so they, can, so they are informed about what we are doing. Another user story could be as a um, person of the administration, I want to see who's, who subscribed to or registered for an event if I had a website, so I can check the details and then register the person. So we wrote these down, you know, on post-it notes, very informal way, and um, we did that in an afternoon, then, I think. We had about uh, 100. We had about 100. Yes, we had about uh, 100 uh, user stories. And after the, the session, we took all the post-it notes and we entered it in a, a ticketing system. So it's just a system where you can record these things so we could follow up uh, what uh, we have. Then we did a market research to see, okay, these requirements, what system would be available to, uh, to fulfill it. And uh, we discovered CVCRM, and we were very glad we could do everything we wanted, at least on paper, uh, with that system. Um, so our first challenge was to learn CVCRM. And we installed it. We thought, OK, it's just a Drupal module, no big deal. We installed it on our uh, local development laptop. And then we saw, oh, it's a little more complex than just uh, filling some settings. So um, we looked uh, what resources were available and uh, one great source of information are the CVCRM books that you find on the website. Another great resource is the CVCRM forum. 
And then uh, we were Googling, and uh, we were very lucky to uh, find uh, a training course in Ghent two weeks later, but it was a developer's course. So uh, we uh, registered for that event, and we studied very hard <laughs> to be prepared. And then uh, the first half hour of the training course, we were completely lost. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember Eric? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. But we persevered and um, ultimately, ultimately we learned uh, the system. So after experimenting a bit with CVCRM, we started the project for real and um, with our, uh, our users of the different teams, we decided to, uh, to have implementation periods of one month every time. And after this, this implementation period where Christoph and I programmed the migration, we had uh, a meeting with our users. So it was a really uh, continuing structure. We developed for a month, we present it to our users, we get feedback, and then we uh, continue. And that's what they call the iterative and incremental approach. And uh, that allowed us to, um, to do some work, present it to the user, get some feedback, see if we misinterpreted our requirements. Uh, and also, together with our users, we discovered the system. So uh, from an early uh, stage, they saw during that meeting how CVCRM looks like, what we did, how you can register for events, and uh, give us some uh, tips how we could do certain things. Okay. Yeah. And then we went live in June 2014. So it took us uh, more than one year to do the migration, but uh, we couldn't work full time on this project because we have other uh, things to do at the company. So I think we worked, um, depending on the period, uh, one day a week, two days a week, sometimes four days uh, during one year. Sometimes when you do uh, a job, you, uh, you don't know how to uh, do certain things. And uh, an important part of a migration project that you're doing yourself is that you can count on a, an external partner to help you when you're uh, in trouble. And we uh, found these uh, friendly uh, Dutch people. <laughs> They're there, <laughs> from CVCOPE, um, who uh, helped us really well during this project. And uh, at the start of the project, we had uh, some discussions with the two ERICs about uh, how we could, um, about functional things, how can we do this in CVCRM. And um, for uh, technical uh, matters, but also functional discussion discussions, we uh, could count on Yap, who uh, helped us tremendously too. Okay, so far for uh, the project structure. Now the more uh, technical parts of the uh, migration project. Basically in CV, uh, CVCRM, there are uh, two ways of importing data. If you look at the menu, you, f you see you can import contacts uh, via CSV files, and you can import memberships and uh, other kind of things. Uh, but if you want to do uh, migration every month and show it to your users, throw it away and do it uh, uh, again next month, then a manual uh, import is cumbersome. So the way to do it is to program it uh, using PHP and the CVCRM API. Uh, you find on uh, the website of CVCRM, on a wiki, uh, the documentation of the uh, API. How can you import things? So the real goal of our uh, migration project was to get the data stored in our SQL Server 2008 database and move it to uh, CVCRM. And we thought that it would be easier if we could copy that SQL Server 2008 database to our migration server 
and put it already in the MySQL format, which is the format of the CVCRM database. And uh, we were lucky because with the DBA tool we use, uh, SQL Yog, we could easily copy the data from the SQL Server database to a MySQL database. And um, I don't have any connection with the company, but we are uh, very, uh, we, we like that too. It's a um, small fee, it costs about $100, but it's really helpful if you want to, or you need to copy data from one database to another. And the interesting uh, part of uh, uh, SQL Yog is that there is a, a wizard where you can define uh, which tables you want to import, and uh, you define it by the uh, import external data wizard, and you can save these steps as a job. And then when you want to rerun the, the job again, you just select the file, you click next, and then it's imported. <coughs> When we look at our uh, migration server, we had uh, three databases. We had the um, Drupal uh, database of the content management system. We had our empty CVCRM database. That was our target database. And we had our source database, which was the, uh, the old system. And so the goal of the migration was to copy the data from here to there. When you look at the file system of the migration server, in the var www folder, you have the files of uh, Drupal, but we added an extra folder called import, and in that folder we stored all, all our PHP code to do the migration. If you zoom out, you have here our server, uh, which was an Ubuntu 12.04 Ubuntu, but it was um, a virtual server running on a, a Windows 2000, 2008 server inside Hyper-V. Um, the advantage of having a virtual server is that you can take a snapshot of your virtual server, which is actually a copy of the server, and then put that uh, copy back again live or destroy it and have a new uh, version. And um, that was very convenient because we could mess with the system and then get back again to a fresh and clean install. So the first time we installed uh, the Ubuntu server, we, we took a copy of the website, we installed CVCRM. We did some uh, manual uh, changes of settings like the language, currency, and things like that. And then we took a snapshot of that virtual server, and that was our clean install. Remember, our code was stored in the import um, folder. We needed to have a copy of that uh, source code too, because when you revert to your uh, clean install, you would lose your settings. So we synchronized the code with a source code uh, control system, version control system called Subversion. Uh, it was popular before Git became very popular, but we were used to uh, using Subversion, so we had no uh, reason to migrate to Git. And uh, since, I think, 2008, we have an account on projecthut.com. It costs a little bit money a year, but it's a version control system. It's, it has a wiki and ticketing system. So the um, user stories were also stored on projecthub.com. So a typical uh, migration uh, process looked like this, four steps. We stored our clean snapshot from uh, Hyper-V. Using SQL Yog, we copied the most recent data from the old system to that local MySQL database. Then we pulled our most recent source files from Subversion, and then we hit run. And then the data was migrated. We could test it, make some changes, and then upload our changes back to Subversion and start all over.
Remember, we had uh, iterations of one month. During that month, we did our development work. And then at the end of the month, we showed our work to our users. Before showing it to our users, we would copy the data from our development server to an old PC we, uh, we had where, on which we installed the same operating system as on our uh, development server, so Ubuntu. We copied it and we always showed our, uh, the data on the test PC. So during the next month, our users could still test the system and we could make our changes without interfering. Now, if we look at uh, how we uh, programmed the migration, um, we had two operation modes, what I would call. Uh, we could start our migration with a web page. We created a simple web page with a few hyperlinks, and every hyperlink corresponded to a particular import. For instance, import memberships, import uh, newsletter subscribers, etc. So step by step, we could use that way of importing data if you were working on a specific area. On the other hand, we also had a way to run the import in an unattended way from the command line of the Ubuntu, Ubuntu server. We um, wrote a shell script that uh, initiated our import, so we could run it uh, in the evening uh, to import everything. And um, these two modes were handy if you were, during the day, for instance, you would test a particular aspect of the import, and then it's easier to have an interactive interface to work with. And um, when you want to run everything, it's easier you just hit a button and uh, that everything runs um, during night. During night. Um, is that good? Can you see it on the next screen? We also had two data options. We could uh, import all the data, which, which took quite a long time or we could import a limited data set that was just a flag we could uh, set in the import script. Because at the end of the migration, when everything was programmed, it took 18 hours to copy the data from our source system, modify it so it would fit in CVCRM the way we wanted. There is another technical reason why we uh, programmed this way of running the import because the command line interface ran outside the context of a web server. Because when we started programming, we found a lot of memory errors because of we had too much data and timeouts we got too. Um, and that's because everything is running inside the uh, Apache web server. And when you uh, free memory in PHP, Apache doesn't always free the memory. It caches it and it frees it when uh, it thinks it would be okay to freeze it, uh, to release it. But then we got memory errors and that was quite frustrating. Uh, so we found a way to run the import outside the context of the web server. And luckily, there is a way uh, to use the CVCRM API outside Drupal hooks or CVCRM hooks, and I hope it will uh, still be possible in the future because it's very handy. I just um, have the code in my presentation. I will not read it. If you're interested, you can get the presentation and see how it's done. It's just a few lines of PHP code that you can include in your file, and then you can run the import. We are programmers, so uh, when we programmed the, uh, the import, we did it in an object-oriented way, and uh, we uh, wrote very specific classes to import one thing in CVCRM. So there was a class to import companies, there was a class to import persons, 
to import newsletter subscribers, memberships, whatever. And so it was a very modular thing that we could um, execute either via our web interface with the hyperlinks, we could import a specific step, or with our uh, command line interface. And the only thing we needed was a wrapper for both, this, both systems that called, that instantiated the objects and calls the import method of that particular class. Something I wanted to mention, it's, it's uh, maybe a technical issue too, but one of the common problems when you import something is that uh, it refers, for instance, to another contact that's not imported yet in the database, and how do you deal with this? Um, our solution to this problem was to um, never import the persons or the companies by itself. So our migration was uh, centered around all the other things we had to import, memberships, newsletter subscribers, uh, financial information, etc. And when, when that particular thing needed a contact, it would assume that contact existed in CVCRM. And it just called a method called get person by external ID. And that uh, method was uh, intelligent. Uh, it would look in CVCRM, do we have that contact yet? If then we would return the data. If not, it would pull the data from the source database and just store the information that is needed to return to the calling method. And um, using that system, you can call recursively this method without crashing. So if, um, let's say, the address of a person refers to it, the address of a company that doesn't exist, and that company has an invoicing address of another company that doesn't exist, then it would call recursively, and when this was exited, the next or the complete information was saved uh, in the database. Then, uh, after having a migration server and a test server, ultimately we had to move everything to a live server, and I just added the specs of our live server just to show it, because there's a lot of debate inside the CVCRM community what kind of uh, machine do you need to run uh, CVCRM smoothly? And maybe it's a bit oversized, I don't know, um, but um, it works very, very well. And it's uh, a Debian Linux we, uh, we have at our hosting provider with four gigs of RAM. It's a dedicated uh, cloud server with one terabyte of traffic. It was the standard in the package, we did not choose it. But it's also secure because you can only administer it via uh, SSL VPN connection. And it costs us 250 euros a month, or 200 pounds, more or less. So to summarize the technical parts, it was very important to have a, a repeatable import, so that's why we programmed it. We had to start every month from scratch or even in mid-month. So it's important to have a thing like a virtual server that you can easily copy or reset. Uh, we wanted to be able to do selective imports. So that's why we created a very modular object-oriented uh, structure to import our data. It had to be memory efficient. That's something we uh, found out during the first months when we had these memory uh, issues. And um, it had the flexibility to be callable from a web page and the command line. So if you don't have, do you have questions about the technical part? Yes, we had to do a lot of data cleaning. Um, but we, uh, we could program this. So um, we had actually uh, a few steps in our uh, migration process. And the first step was cleaning the, the source uh, database. And because we took a copy of our live server, which was SQL Server, 
and to copy it in MySQL, MySQL, we could do all this cleaning directly in the source database. So when the actual migration started, it would, had, uh, would have uh, good data, clean data. Okay, so let's talk about the human factor of uh, the import. Um, so as I, as I said before, before even thinking about using CVM, we involved our users because um, we know our users quite well, isn't it, Christoph? And we could see that if we just programmed in our corner CVC RM import data and uh, suddenly we say, hi guys, we have a new CRM system. Here is it, here is the manual and use it. Then um, it would not have been possible. So um, we said, okay, let's, they, they were complaining about the previous system. So we, we told to them, let's do it together. Let's look how we can improve it. So one first step was uh, involving them during the requirements phase, as I already told. A second uh, thing we did was keeping an ongoing dialogue with our users. And we um, did that by having these monthly meetings. And so even when something went wrong during the end of the month, which happened, that uh, we had a meeting on Friday and we were working hard to uh, implement the last feature. And then we thought, okay, no problem, we start the import on a Thursday uh, evening, and then on Friday it will be okay. And then uh, our import script also sent an email to us when it was done with the log file. And so um, I woke up Friday morning and I checked my emails and I said, oh gosh, <laughs> the migration failed. Um, so we didn't want to cancel uh, the meeting even though something went wrong. So every month we really held these meetings. And that particular day, we called the people to our office where we have a, a large whiteboard instead of sitting in the conference room. And we said, okay, we have a problem with the migration, but um, let's talk about something else. How do you do prospection or do you manage memberships and so on? And we worked something out that was very useful for our next iteration. So uh, instead of uh, deceiving the people and saying, oh, sorry, it will uh, not work, we kept the dialogue. Even though the meetings we had every month were uh, not easy for us because our user, users are, are very critical and uh, they complain and they say, well, it doesn't work and uh, you misinterpreted a thing. But we said, okay, just, uh, just listen, just write down and try to do better next month. So um, instead of hiding, we were open and uh, involved them in good and bad days. We also asked them to write a user manual. And uh, two uh, users volunteered to write the manual. And we thought it would also be a good idea to let them do the work because it will uh, improve the, the acceptance uh, with the other users. And I think it was a good decision yeah. because when uh, people were saying, it's not in the manual, it's not in the manual, we said, okay, no problem, just ask uh, Vicky to do it. Then a very important aspect of the project was uh, training and support. And uh, instead of uh, rolling out the system, giving a two-day training and say, okay, now you know how to use it, just do it. We involved them also from the start. So during our monthly meetings, we explained what we knew about the system. The first months we knew that much about CVCRM, and but it uh, increased every month. And so with us, they discovered the possibilities of CVCRM. Then before going live in uh, June of this year, we um, did a recap of all the things we implemented because we had also uh, some custom uh, extensions that we developed to do particular things. So they got an uh, overall view of how to use it. 
and then we uh, went live. But we um, gave assistance after going live. We said to the people, okay, uh, the next two weeks or three weeks after the, of the migration, after going live, we will be uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, they, that they could reach you for quest, could reach us for uh, questions and assistance. We also arranged some uh, extra trainings for users who were not involved from the start because we could not uh, stop our business every month and uh, have discussions with users. So not all users were in these uh, monthly meetings. So for the other users, we arranged a few extra trainings. We had one uh, last week uh, for a specific uh, uh, group. And still now, we are, uh, we are in a period of intensive uh, support and bug fixing because we had our fair deals of, deal of bugs, which is normal when you uh, uh, do some uh, software development. We uh, didn't have a major issue, I think. Um, there is a new issue during the presentation. <laughs> No, we, had, we didn't have any major issue. Uh, sometimes there were, there were bugs. They would call us send an, or send an email, and we could solve it within one or two hours or for the next day. So um, that was, uh, we were lucky with that. We also asked our users to test every month and, um, or during our implementation time. And they said, yes, we were going to test it. But uh, in Drupal, you can see if a person logs in or not. And we noticed <laughs> they didn't log in on our test machine. So um, we changed the rules of the game a bit. And we asked the people, I think it was around October of, or November of last year, we said to them, OK, our meeting is from uh, 11 till uh, 1 o'clock. But come earlier. You can come at 9 o'clock or at 10 o'clock. It doesn't matter. Uh, depending on the traffic, just bring your uh, your laptop. You can sit in the conference room, and you know, in the meantime, you can uh, test the system. And so, then they really started to uh, to test our uh, code. It was also an opportunity for them to chat with the people from the other branches. They don't see them very often, so they were very they were distracted a lot. But they did some testing. But they drank coffee too. <laughs> yeah, no beers. <laughs> They were most of them women, so you, you know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> talked, about, <laughs> talked about holidays, talked about the children, etc. Okay. But that's a human factor of uh, a migration. I think you should uh, provide some time for that. <laughs> well, I included a, a slide with some very cheesy stock photography of happy users, <laughs> and I included uh, a question mark after the word happy users. Um, my statement is, and Laura knows it, you can't make a woman happy with software. So, <laughs> 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 um, but uh, anyway, um, I think they should be more happy with CVCRM than with the previous system because um, they have the uh, different search uh, options in CVCRM. In the previous system, it was very limited. They could only search uh, based on the name of a person or an organization. Now they have the, the quick search, the advanced search. They can search an ID, on email, or whatever. And uh, we can uh, get much better data out of the system. And we also found there were still data errors, uh, but now they have the possibility to uh, clean the data with standard CVCRM features where they can merge contacts and things like that. All right, are there any questions about how we tackled the migration project? Technical questions, questions about project management or uh, human side, which was, I think, the hardest part of the migration. For us. For us, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, actually, uh, if you, uh, if I take the slide with the team. 
The actual project management was done by us. We planned which feature we were going to implement when, and uh, our uh, marketing and communication manager did, in fact, a communication to the other uh, committees and, uh, and user groups, sent mails and things like that. But, but actually we, because he's not a technical guy, so uh, we plan the iterations and... So, for example, if we complain that some kind of users uh, were yeah. not uh, at, the, at the right level, we organized a meeting with them uh, so that we could solve that kind of problem. So, we complained and he <laughs> solved it. Because during, during the monthly iterations, we asked, we asked the users to do some certain things. For instance, think about how you would manage this or this problem and send it by uh, or in two weeks, the latest. But of course, people have other uh, things to do. And um, so it was the, the job of our uh, project manager to uh, remind these people in a friendly way. <laughs> yes? When you first started, how long period did you plan? And how long period did you actually use? It was the, the CEO who said to us uh, the system had to go live, I think. December. Uh, December <laughs> this year. But um, it, it became six months late. Uh, we knew it wasn't realistic, knew, uh, yes. but <laughs> we didn't dare to tell her. <laughs> her, her. Yeah, her. Um, so the first step was to, to say, okay, uh, April, it will become April. <laughs> and uh, at the end, it became June. Uh, the advantage of uh, the choice was that users were just uh, beginning using the system for two weeks before going mm -hmm. uh, on vacation. And so we had two months of time to solve the most critical problems. Uh, so when they came back uh, half of August, um, the system was stabilized and uh, we could work on the minor bugs uh, thing again. So were there quite a lot of new features then added along yes. the way? Yes. Yes. No, 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 that's right. That's the advantage if you do, uh, the advantage of, of doing a uh, project internally is that you don't have a fixed scope or a budget. Well, there was a budget, of course, but uh, you can discuss it. If, if they, they see it's really needed, okay, you can do it. And the major problem was that um, we had some goals uh, to solve design problems at, at the old system. So the design in CP is really much better, but the users had to adapt to the new uh, yes. design uh, decisions we took. And uh, that, that is difficult for them. Because it's, it was also a choice of um, using CP CRM the way it was designed, instead of enforcing the old way of working in the new system which the users would have preferred because then they would recognize the name of the fields of the old system and uh, the screens. But uh, we didn't want to do it like this because we knew we would have problems with upgrades. So it's better to work the way the system is designed. Did you assess any other software apart from CVCRM? Yes, I excluded this from this um, uh, presentation because there was a prologue <laughs> where actually we had chosen another system. Uh, we, we had a short list of four uh, CRM systems that we could uh, use and CR, uh, CVCRM was one, on our, one of the systems on our short list but uh, we, we didn't know anything about um, CVCRM so we had contact with a, a company of, in Belgium who would do it but um, when we wanted to choose a system, they say we have too, uh, too much business doing other things, we, we cannot help you. So we skipped uh, CVCRM from our list and we chose another software, German uh, C commercial CRM system. 
uh, but when we started the implementation, uh, after two weeks or three weeks, I don't know, very, very early in the process, we, uh, our gut feeling was that, we, that it would not succeed with that tool. And that the, the salesperson who told us everything was possible in that system was actually not possible with that system. And so we took a difficult decision of cancelling uh, that project. It costed, costed us a lot of money, but it was better to uh, stop in at, at an early stage and lose money than, than uh, put much more money in the system. It wasn't a SAP, but uh, it was uh, that kind of horror story that we were going, were going into, and we, we didn't want to do that. problems. Uh, I think the software, the German software was, was not bad, no. but uh, the company in Belgium who, who did the implementation, uh, the communication with them didn't work. And uh, also at the design of the package there was a first problem um, of linking contacts with one other the way we wanted. Um, at, at the basic design there was a, already a problem and what we saw after two weeks, but it took uh, it took uh, several months before we yes, could before. Uh, quit and yes. cancel the project. And would you say it's painful to run around to the CRM system on a Belgian team rather than just using the Africa thing? Yes, I think so because our live server is is a dedicated server, but it's also a virtual machine. So, uh, and our, our development server was quite responsive, uh, hosted on our uh, Windows 2008 database. Now our live server is much more powerful, so it run, runs more smoothly, <coughs> but it's, it's perfectly uh, feasible. Yeah, they still find CVCRM quite difficult, actually. Um, but uh, the data is stored in a much more logical way with contributions, contacts, uh, memberships. And so it's our hope that after a few weeks or months, they will forget the old system. They don't talk much about the old system anymore. So that's our first good step. Um, the first thing we did is to shut down the old system. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's very important yeah. to do that and to give them the impression that uh, going back is not possible. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you do then when someone mentions the old system? Do you lock them up? <laughs> <laughs> we fire them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the role of the steering committee. <laughs> They had a tailor-made system before, uh, with uh, only menus they, they used. There was nothing on the system they didn't use. And of course, <coughs> of course now they have uh, a package like CV. Uh, there are a lot of menu items they, they don't use every day. And that's their main problem, to um, just don't lose themselves in the, in the menu structure and in the possibilities in the functionalities of the package. But time will, will solve that. Yeah. Do you differ between happy users and light users? No. 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 But uh, it took us one year, and it was also good to involve the users every month, so they had the time to adapt to the system. Uh, and, you know, it was the classical uh, phases of uh, denying and uh, rejecting and whatever, all of psychological things, but ultimately now, they are using it and they're doing their daily job with the system. Actually, uh, when we said the previous week that we would go to England, uh, both of us, uh, there was some of revolution <laughs> going on. Uh, we are lucky we are here because they didn't see it that way. They want us to, to stay uh, in Belgium to uh, 
because we are still here in that intensive support uh, and stabilizing phase. So they were panicking a little bit, but... There were no crashes. Uh, there were no crashes, no, no. no. <laughs> and I'll, I'll check if, if I have missed calls. <laughs> but we solved some problems here. Yes, uh, Christoph solved uh, Wednesday evening a small issue. Yeah. That's the advantage of having a CRM in a web environment. So from anywhere you can access it. That was not possible with our previous system. All right, no more questions? Okay, thank you.